In Japan, at around 1540 AD, Christianity was rapidly spreading throughout the country. However, during the late 1500s, many persecutions against Christians in Japan were committed, causing the deaths of many innocent lives. Around the time these incidents began occurring in 1564, Paul Miki was born in Sanukamata. Ever since he was baptized at a young age, he felt a calling for the religious lifestyle. Though he may have never became a saint during his life, he was still able to incorporate the works of mercy into his life, such as sheltering the homeless and forgiving all injuries. Estimated to be born in 1564, St. Paul grew up in Tanukamata as a wealthy child due to his father being a successful military leader. He grew up with a fairly normal childhood, and in a time where Catholicism ran wild due to St. Francis Xavier's good news in the early 1500s. Thanks to his message, Paul Miki felt a religious life calling for him, so he studied at a Jesuit college in Azuchi. After years of preparation, he finally became a Jesuit in 1580. Despite that Paul Miki didn't live long enough to become a saint in his lifetime, he was still highly regarded amongst his fellow Jesuits for his great skill in preaching. He was even able to convince many Japanese to convert over to Catholicism, likely thanks to his aforementioned excellence in preaching. By 1592, many Japanese officials became wary of the fact that at the time, there were over 200,000 Christians in Japan. One powerful official in particular named Hideyoshi was given a lie from a Spanish merchant that the Christian missionaries were traitors of Japan and would help Spain and Portugal to defeat Japan. Hearing this, Hideyoshi arrested 17 Japanese Catholic citizens, six Franciscans from across the world, and three Japanese Catholic Jesuits, including Paul Miki. All of the prisoners, which included children, were forced to walk 1,000 kilometers from Kyoto to Nagasaki, and through out most of the walk, the Catholics sang the Te Deum, the church's traditional hymn of joy and giving thanks. When they finally reached Nagasaki on February 5th, all of the Catholics were crucified. Before he died, St. Paul Miki forgave all of his executioners and calmly preached before his executioner took his life by stabbing him and the other Catholics through the heart. Even if his life may have ended short, St. Paul Miki was still able to incorporate the works of mercy into his life, and especially during his death. One corporal work of mercy he likely performed was sheltering the homeless, because Jesuits metaphorically sheltered children from danger by creating a safe environment for children to live in. In addition, St. Paul Miki was able to bear all wrongs patiently because when Hideyoshi was forcing him and his other Catholic companions to walk 1,000 kilometers, Paul merely went with the wrong Hideyoshi was committing and calmly prayed the entire walk. Finally, what is likely his most well-known work of mercy is when he forgave all injuries by forgiving his executioners right before death. Although St. Paul Miki was unable to live long enough to perform many corporal works of mercy, his spiritual works of mercy still live on to this very day, causing us to feel inspired by his selflessness. In conclusion, St. Paul Miki led a short but religious life and stayed a faithful follower of Jesus, even if it meant facing death without any fear at all. In fact, according to Examiner.com, St. Paul Miki said the following before his death. After Christ's example, I forgive my persecutors. I do not hate them. I ask God to have pity on all, and I hope my blood will fall on my fellow man as a fruitful rain. This quote shows us just how much he followed the works of mercy by forgiving even those who wished to end his life. More importantly, he wished to set an example for other Catholics and non-Catholics alike to live a merciful and loving life. All the while, he performed his deed in a similar fashion to the man who he spent his life worshipping, Jesus, by accepting his death with faith and bravery.